So this entire setup, from the computer, to the monitors, to the keyboard, I sold it all for $120 and still made a profit. And this isn't a crappy PC either, it has an i7, 13GB of RAM, an SSD, a hard drive, and a good gaming graphics card, the R7 260X. It's extremely difficult to find all these components for so cheap, so let's jump right into it and I'll explain just how I accomplished such a feat. We'll start off with the star of the show, the actual computer. We initially found this computer in a recycling dumpster, and with permission, we're allowed to take it as our own. When we first acquired it, there was no hard drive, but aside from a dented case, it had no downsides. It was an OEM machine, the Dell 435MT. It had an i7-920, an HD4850, and 6GB of RAM. So I bought a 1TB 7200RPM hard drive for $30 on sale at Newegg and installed Windows 10 on it. After a bit of testing, I decided this computer had a lot of potential. However, if I wanted it to be able to run modern games at a good frame rate, I would need a substantially better graphics card. So, after going through OfferUp and the eBay marketplace for a few weeks, I was able to snag an R7 260X for only $33. It was essentially brand new and worked perfectly with the system. Now, 6GB of RAM would be enough to run games at, but it'd be a pretty crappy experience. So, after searching through more marketplaces, I got an 8GB stick of DDR3 RAM for only $17. Now, an interesting thing about the Dell 435MT is that it had 6 slots of RAM with 1GB of RAM in each slot. So, after installing the stick of 8GB, I had a total of an irregular amount of 13GB DDR3, which was still plenty enough to run most modern games with. The last thing I would add to this system was a 500GB 850 EVO Samsung SSD. I originally acquired this SSD for I believe about $80 2 or 3 years ago as another sale from Newegg. However, if you run the math, that would not equate to a profit if I sold the computer system for only $120. But I didn't take this into account since the computer was for a friend without a lot of money and I hadn't been using the SSD for over a year. I found the same model on the used market for $50 though, and other 500GB SSDs can be found for about $40. Now you may be curious why I didn't upgrade the i7-920 and that's because we were trying to keep costs low. Even after a $40 CPU upgrade, the theoretical performance increase wouldn't be very significant. So that's how I got all the parts for the computer system, patiently browsing the used market and bargaining with sellers. However, there still remains how I acquired all the peripherals. Of the two monitors, one is 1440x900 and the other one is 1600x900, both of which I got from the computer recycling location. The same goes for the Wi-Fi card I installed in the computer and the new unused keyboard. Side note though, the mouse he bought himself a few years back for about $20. My friend was in town from across the country so we met up and I sold the system to him and he still uses it to this day. He says it was well worth the upgrade from the mid-tier laptop that he was previously using. Well then, now that we got its origin story out of the way, how about we take a look at the performance in a few modern popular titles. But keep in mind that the actual performance will be higher than demonstrated today since all recording was then internally and impacted the overall performance of the system. We begin with one of the most popular games ever, Minecraft. This game released over a decade ago back in 2009 and semi-recently experienced a resurgence in popularity. During testing, the game was ran with the lowest settings, 9 chunks, and a resolution of 1600x900. With these settings, the computer was able to deliver a smooth experience as we watched the small village burn to the ground. The gameplay generally remains this way as one traverses Minecraft's seemingly infinite world, but will occasionally slow down to load some chunk updates. This is well demonstrated when a house is filled with explosives and is then triggered. It's not very impactful on an overall gameplay, but it's worth mentioning nonetheless. Following Minecraft was Valve's Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Released in 2012, CSGO has been popular among hundreds of thousands of players and is frequently used to benchmark computer systems. On this system, CSGO obviously ran well and there was no dips in the frame rate as gameplay remained enjoyable. It was ran with the lowest settings in 1600x900p and performed well. Higher settings could easily be achieved, but a higher frame rate is often preferable in games such as Counter-Strike. Fortnite was the next and final game to be tested on this computer, which is coincidentally one of the primary reasons why it was purchased in the first place. It, like the other games tested today, was run with the lowest settings in 1600x900p. The footage of this game was more impacted than the other games due to the recording with OBS, so just keep in mind that gameplay was generally smoother than you see in the recording. Still, even while recording, the frame rate as shown in the top upper right of the screen remains in the upper 60s and lower 70s. So, that's how you do it. That's how you piece together a computer that can actually run modern games for only $120. Just keep in mind that when you go to a computer recycling location that they may not allow you to just take free computers and always be sure to ask beforehand. But often you may not even need to go out for one of these places. On used marketplaces such as eBay, OfferUp, or Craigslist, there are always people selling old OEM and sometimes even custom built computers for very cheap. A recommendation I'd make is that if the money is tight, to try to negotiate a price down a bit. The longer an item has been posted, likely the seller will be willing to go lower on the price. Just remember to remain reasonable and don't lowball people. Also, even though the video made it seem simple, there were many issues I ran into such as parts being sold to other buyers and listings just randomly vanishing. 
Also, I originally had three of these OEM Dell 4035MTs, but one was dead on arrival, and I managed to absolutely fry the motherboard of the other one. Special thanks to Yuri on YT for getting the footage today. Regardless, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm. While you're at it, please subscribe because that helps a lot in video quality and production and positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below, and have a great day. Bye!